get. I got this at the Goodwill bins. So it was probably like a buck or two and I sold it for 150 in 10 minutes. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, these are my big money bolos, and I am going to give you a heads up right now. I am scheduling this video for late April. And the reason I'm doing that is because a lot of these bolos you're going to see in like my Goodwill Bins videos and some other things where I sourced them. Or I talked about them in like, this is my bolo and stuff like that. So I don't want to spoil those videos by putting this out first. So I'm holding this one back. So some of these are going to be new and some of these are you, you are going to have seen before. Now, some of you only watch my what solds and you don't watch my other videos. So these are all going to be new to you. But if you see a duplicate, that is why, because I didn't want to spoil the Goodwill Bins videos. All right, I've got some really great bolos coming your way. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. And eek, I love the big money bolos. They're my favorite. But, you know, I am a big... I am a big... <laughs> I tell you guys all the time that I love selling bread and butter because those are the ones that are consistently selling every day. <laughs> Oh, let's get, let's just get started here. All right. The first item, we're just going to leave that in for laughs. All right. Lillian Vernon. And if you watch my Goodwill Bins video, you have seen this one. I literally walked over to these, picked them up, sat them back down and said, no way that thing is huge. I do not want those in my house. And then I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go check the tush tag. I looked at the tush tag. I looked up Lillian Vernon and she is a bolo. If you can find Santa and Mrs. Claus, big money. I couldn't find any comps on the leprechaun. I even looked on Worth Point and I couldn't find any. So I priced it high and I took a best offer. Um, I had two of these. They both sold. I went ahead and took a best offer of $125 plus shipping on each one of those. Could I have held out for more? I think that I could have, but I paid a dollar each for them. So really big plush that are heavy. Our thrift or our Goodwill bins will do a dollar on those typically. Um, the next one that sold is this awesome Liz Tech Star Moon handmade signed artisan brooch. One of a kind, dated 2000. It is incredible. Absolutely love the detail of this brooch. Um, there were other things by this artist and I priced this at, um, $75, put it on sale and it sold for $48 and 75 cents plus shipping my sale price. This is a vintage 2000 Sunco frosted mini pool float raft. If you guys don't know, vintage pool floats, vintage rafts, they can go for crazy money. Um, in one of my featured members videos, um, it's actually a Facebook member share. Somebody sold a raft for almost a thousand dollars. So definitely check out those videos. If you're not watching those, they are jam packed with big money bolos. This one I got at the Goodwill Benz also sold it for $46 and 50 cents. My sale price plus shipping. Blaze and the Monster Machine. This is one of my favorite monster machines to find. It is Starla the truck. This is the elephant version. She is big money, both elephant version and other version, just regular truck form. But Starla is good. I sold her for $35.75 plus shipping. These right here. Okay, so there's a garage sale I go to every summer. And it's one of those garage sales where they have like five to 10 per summer. So typically when I go, I'm kind of like, I'm going to see the same stuff over and over again. But this day I found these amazing Vintage Mexican folk art, feather craft, furred, not furred, bird art, carved wood frame, hard to find. I paid five bucks for all of these. I sold these for a best offer of $110 plus shipping, and they sold pretty quickly. It's feather art. It is absolutely incredible. I've never sold anything like this. Um, 
again, they sold pretty quick and just a really cool find right there made in Mexico. And that's not all of them were had information on the back, but this one did. This dress. Oh, this dress. I've talked about it before. I, I think I am finally sold completely out. Uh, probably purchased over a hundred of these. I believe they were $9.99 with 90% off. Or no, they were $10 with 90% off. And I bought all of them. All of them. And in the beginning, I was kind of like, what am I doing? Because they weren't selling for that much. And they weren't selling very quickly. And I guess it's probably because I had a lot of competition. Because other people probably picked up the same dresses at the same discount store. Well, let me tell you what happened. As these items sat in my store, those other sellers sold out because they probably didn't buy over a hundred. <laughs> um, but I did. I'm like a dollar. Yes, thank you. I will take that. It retails for 148. So I was selling these anywhere from like 20 to 30 dollars. Well, as I was getting to the end, I started increasing my prices to 40 and 50 dollars, and they started selling for that. This one actually sold for $50 plus shipping. I don't know why it says this, probably because that is um, the sale price right now. But at the time it was 35% off and I sold it for $50. So I have sold 11 of these. I wish I could click on this and show you guys what the other one sold for and how I started lower and continued to increase my price. And again, it's supply and demand. If there's no competition, you can increase your prices. It doesn't matter if you've sold it cheaper in the past. So keep that in mind if you guys do retail arbitrage. Vintage nursery rhyme train decoupage wooden wall hanging handmade one of a kind. I got this at a garage sale for $2 and I got to tell you, this took forever to sell. I thought it was darling. Um, I paid two bucks for it. I priced it probably too high. Ended up taking a best offer of $65 plus shipping. If I would have priced it lower, would it have sold quicker? It could have. This came from the Goodwill bins in a big bag of dollhouse stuff. I took the time and I parted this out and it's going to pay off. And we will talk about that more in a future video. I sold this one set for $40 plus shipping. And it's Irwin dollhouse. Um, and I put MCM because it's kind of that style in the title. These are Mardi Gras necklaces. And the cool thing about this is... I picked these up at a thrift store for $1.35 and my sale ended and somebody bought it between one sale and another sale for my full asking price of $50 plus shipping. So just good timing on that one. Here's the other leprechaun that sold for $1.25. So they were identical. This here came out of, um, my friend gave me a bunch of stuff. She was going to take it to the Goodwill bins. And I'm like, no. And I did a video on it. So go check out that video. I sold this plush. It is a crown craft pillow buddies. I looked up comps and there was one listed for like over a hundred dollars. It was in better condition than mine, but, um, couldn't find any solds that were exactly the same. I listed it high, sold it really quick. I'm talking really quick for $50 plus shipping. This sold in 10 minutes. I kid you not, 10 minutes this sold. Um, I listed it. I put it up for $200. My sale had not even kicked in and somebody offered me $150. And I'm like, yes, I will take it. I got this at the Goodwill bins. So it was probably like a buck or two. And I sold it for 150 in 10 minutes. Yay! I'm so excited about this one. It is a realistic cheetah plush, save our space, wild African zoo stuffed animal. And it is a big money bolo. Let me show you the tag here. I couldn't find any comps that were exactly the same. Um, I did show the eyes because a lot of people want to know about the eyes. And this did have some condition issues. So I showed those, showed the measurement, showed the tag. I do a lot of photos with my plush. This thing was so stinking cute. If you haven't seen my video on realistic plush to be on the lookout for, definitely watch that. Um, one realistic plush that does super well is the wolf. So I was like, hey, a cheetah, I'm going to price it high. And bam, 10 minutes. This is a vintage um, model kit by Heller. And I got this at a garage sale for $3, sold it for $35.75 plus shipping. These are vintage Murray 
Allen 10 lithograph Easter can Easter egg candy containers, six of them. I got these at a garage sale for $2, sold them for $55 and 80 cents. I got great feedback. They said they were in better condition than they expected. If you ever see these little 10 eggs, they're just candy containers and they're really, really cool. And people collect them and use them during Eastern time for decoration. Sold these for 55 80 plus shipping. Here is another item from my friend's childhood uh, toys that she was going to donate. And I said, no way, bring it to me. It's a Puffalump. So you guys, when I saw a Puffalump pop out of there, I was like, you got to be kidding me. She was donating a Puffalump. Um, it did have some stains on it. And um, I did wash it. It was really bad before I washed it. It had something on it, but it came out other than these little spots right here. Still sold this for $49.60 plus shipping. All right, if you watch This Is My Bolo, that is where I do a collaboration with a bunch of my featured members from my YouTube channel. So they are Bolo Buddies members who have joined memberships for perks. What I do is I ask them to send me a 60 second video talking to me about a Bolo they sold. So you actually get to see them talking about it, which is super fun. And they always have great Bolos. So type into the search bar, Bolo Buddies, this is my Bolo, and those videos will pop up. Highly recommend them. Definitely check out those channels. In that video, I talked about this item. It is an antique vintage gold-filled mother of pearl parasol umbrella handle from the 19th century. When I picked this up at this garage sale for two bucks, I had no clue what it was, but I knew it looked high dollar and it was super cool. And I sell replacement parts all the time. I sold this for a best offer of $100 plus shipping. These Doc Martin shoes, flip-flops, I got these at a garage sale. I paid $5 for them. I also included these in a reseller vlog. I'm not sure. That will have posted before this for sure. Um, sold this for $38 plus shipping. Uh, some of you guys don't watch my reseller vlogs. They don't get as many views. Um, let me know down in the comments. Do you like the reseller vlogs? The next item is this vintage Japan standing English settler hunting dog figurine. You would have seen this in a sourcing garage sale video that I did a while back. It did take a little while to sell, but um, that garage sale was incredible. I got, I should have bought more. Do you ever like watch things back or think back to a sale you went to and think, oh my goodness, I should have bought more. This came from that kind of sale. I sold this for $40 plus shipping and I paid a dollar for it. This here, you've definitely seen in a video. Um, I actually sold two of these to the same person. I sold this one and I sold this one. I have a little more detail for you guys. Um, I sold this one for $162.50 and then I sent out an offer for $145 and she accepted it. Now, the lady messaged me and she asked me if it was a certain artist. And I'm like, I have no idea. And apparently this artist is from Kettering, Ohio. And I'm like, you know, I really don't know. It's not signed. So she got the item and she left me feedback and said that it is from that artist. So I still am not sure. I'm not going to put the, I have one of these left. I'm not going to put it in the title since I don't know and I can't verify it. But the story behind this was I've had these listed probably for over a year and, um, they weren't selling. And I was over at Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle's live show and they she was doing a live show on Easter. And I said, can you take a look at my listing and give me some key words for this item? Because for some reason it is not selling. So kit, uh oh, I'm gonna mess it up. Kitchy, she said kitchy and then assemblage, assem assem assemblage. I don't know what that even means, but those were the two words that they told me to add. It was her and Jody Toy Attic. Um, I will link them down below. They are both a wealth of knowledge. And as soon as I changed my title, I don't know if it was me going in there and changing things or if it was the keywords. I'm guessing the keywords definitely helped, but um, this person found them and she bought two of them from me. So super excited about that. I did pay up for these at an estate sale. I paid $12 each. And I do have another one listed that's like this. It is so, so cute. It's just really a great item. And the last item I sold, um, I did a hashtag shorts on. So you guys may have seen that. Uh, vintage Commonwealth musical wind up plush bear. This little bear eats the ice cream cone like this. It is so stinking cute. 
Um, I took a best offer of $53 plus shipping, and I got this at a garage sale for $1. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Those were my big money bolos. I have way more bread and butter bolos of items that I sold because I sell more bread and butter. I stock my store with bread and butter because then I am constantly having daily sales. If I just source for big money, I'm not going to find that much. I mean, I... It's just not going to happen. Not where I source. Um, could I go on to online auctions like Hybid and those different places and really pay a lot of money for items? I could do that. But you know what? I like to dig through the bins and I like to go to garage sales and I like to source really cheap. So that's one thing you're going to learn on my channel is how to source cheap and make turn that into big money. Um Am I saying that it's wrong to spend big money to make big money? Absolutely not. If you can spend a hundred bucks and make a thousand, go for it. Like I encourage it. Um, I just don't have the patience to go like onto all the auction, uh, like high bid. And I don't know what the other ones are. My husband sources on those, not high bid particularly, but something locally. And he goes and picks stuff up all the time. And I'm just like, it takes so much time and I need to be making YouTube videos. So I am instead making YouTube videos. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. And there's going to be some videos popping up here and here. A subscribe in another video down below. And leave me an emoji or a comment of your favorite bolo in this video. Thanks for watching.